Hey guys, Ivan here, and first in this video we're gonna talk about this freak right here, Derek Lansford. After he did this guest posing at Pittsburgh Pro, everybody went nuts about this guy and everybody wants to see him in the open, nobody wants him to defend his 212 title, even though that is not really what he's planning or wasn't. Originally, his plan was to actually defend his 212 title. His plan was not to grow this much. This did not happen intentionally. It just sort of happened, you know. He wasn't trying. He wasn't pushing the foot or anything. It was really surprising to hear this from his coach, Honey Rambert, on his YouTube channel, on his podcast. So let me play this part of the podcast to you guys, and then we can talk about it more. Obviously, he's growing. Well, that's the question everybody's asking. Is right. I'm seeing everywhere is like, how is he going to make it to 212? It, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. It's, it's super difficult because yeah. now, I mean, he was already flat last year. Yeah. And now he's put on a lot Even of good more. muscle and he's keeping the calories and the food really low. I'm going to pause a couple of times to break down what Hani had to say. But basically, this is Derek Lansford without trying very hard. His food was low. Prior to this, Hani also said that he was on 150 grams of carbs for days before this guest posing. So they're trying to keep him to keep his weight as low as possible so he stays at a striking distance at 212 title again. So he's not even trying very hard to get big and he keeps getting bigger. Apparently, I mean obviously his body wants to go to the open. It just not decided yet. But let's hear what else uh, Hani has to say. And everyone's like, oh man, he must be blowing up because he wants to do the open and he's, you know, Hani hasn't been doing the open. Absolutely not. This is not something that we are planning to do yeah. whatsoever. Now it's turning into other things because everyone's like, hey, is he doing it? Is he not doing it? He should do it. He looks great. He's going to deflate. All of those things are now in play. So originally it wasn't a plan, but now after this guest posing, after everybody basically told him, told them that he's way too big and that he will have to deflate too much and even last year he was flat, he wasn't pushing things too much and he looked the way he looked, so he probably won't make any progress if he does a 212, it's just a matter of how important it is for him to defend his 212 title. But now, after this guest posing, they are considering actually moving to the Open this year, 2022. His weight is very heavy. I don't want to give you exact numbers, uh, but... I was going to ask that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But now, more than ever, it is becoming very difficult for him to make weight. Yeah. It really, really is. He didn't give us the exact number. We don't know how much he's weighing. I heard something around 260 from Nick Walker, the podcast, because Nick Walker is training the same gym as him. They both live in Tampa. They are seeing each other every day. Nick says that Derek is big and really full and in good condition for that size. And I heard something about the number 260, but I don't know about that. I mean, Honey wasn't going to give us a, a clear answer. But guys, I encourage you to watch this podcast. Go on uh, Honey Rambo, the truth podcast. The first 10 minutes are about Derek Lansford. And he gives out a lot of good information. Of course, I didn't want to post the whole thing here, but you get the idea. Original plan was for him to defend his 212 title, but now, after not just this guest posing, but after seeing how his body is responding, the amount of muscle that he was able to put on during this offseason, they are now considering other avenues like moving to the open, and I think, personally, that that would be the right decision to do. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Oh yeah, before we move on guys, I just want to introduce to you the classic creatine by the old school labs and nothing special, nothing crazy about this creatine except it has a probiotic in it so it's going to help you absorb more food and help your stomach, help your gut and you know, if you want to support me and my channel, you can try this creatine it's very well micronized and it comes in a great classic looking package so guys, click on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVAN thank you guys, let's move on what about Chris Bumstead, our classic physique Mr. Olympia? Is he growing like Derek Lansford or is he growing? Is he progressing at all? It looks like it. Who says Chris has small arms? I mean, his arms don't look small to me at all. Actually, they look like they are stuffed with side enhancement oil, with Sintel. I know this is not the case. I mean, I don't know for, for a fact, but I know he has uh, horrible insertions. It just looks like Sintel, but it's not. Yeah, it's just insertions. 
even Chris talks about it. I mean, he says that his arms look weird, that they look like he tore both of those biceps and triceps, probably. But uh, they're not small. They're definitely not small. Not at all. Because of those insertions, they might seem, you know, not the biggest. He doesn't have, like, the fullest, the longest biceps or triceps. But with his genetic potential, I, I think he got max out of it. I think he maxed those arms out, basically, at this point. I don't know how much bigger can they get. I mean, if he gets bigger overall, if he decided to do the open for some reason, and he really pushed the foot and gear and just grew everywhere, sure, his arms would uh, get bigger. But for classic... Yeah, I think this is it. I think he maxed them out. And they are looking pretty freaky at his point. And not very aesthetic, let's be honest. But in the arms themselves, in the, when he's doing these bicep curls, they look sintolish. Even though they are not, I'm not saying Chris Bumstead is using oil, no. They just look like that a little bit. But, you know, he, he grew them. I gotta, I gotta give him props for that. I mean, he's not born with, with the greatest arm genetics uh, as far as shape, but as far as adding muscle... He can do that if he wants to, if he tries hard, apparently he, he grows and his arms also will grow. And how will they look on stage? Will they look better, improved? I mean, maybe, maybe it's just great lighting and a nasty pump, but to me it looks like he, he did improve those arms. I think they are bigger. We'll see on stage soon enough. Here is what Justin Rodriguez, a former favorite to win the Indie Pro, is looking like right now, about five days out of New York Pro, the show that he always wanted to win so bad. Uh, Indie Pro, he failed miserably, but he did the same thing in the Arnold, you remember? I mean, he really wanted to be at his best for that Arnold, and he messed it up. But then later, a week, only a week later, he came in peeled, shredded, dry for Boston Pro, where he pushed William Bonek. Now at Indy, he was not even top three, he was beaten by Max Charles, but he was way more off than he was at the Arnold now. He was much worse. So how much can he really improve for the New York? Well, based on this photo, I think he will look much better, much drier, much harder, more separated, in better conditioning, in better shape. Overall, he's bringing a better package. Is that going to be enough to win that New York Pro? Maybe. I mean, we're gonna have a pretty much similar show with the addition of Peter Clunch here. I mean, Blessing is gonna be there, of course, Charles Griffin, so he would have to beat the same guys, basically. Can he pull it off? Well, if he brings his A game, his absolute best, I think he can do that. Based on the way he was writing his posts, it looks like he doesn't really believe in himself. It looks like he's going to take some time off after this New York Pro, and I don't think he's, he's really in that place mentally to win a high-caliber show like that. He really wanted that win, but look at his caption, for example. He writes why Indie Pro was the way it was for him, and then he says, uh, time to take a rest, but first one more chapter to be done next week. So first, he says it's time to take a rest. Apparently, ha, I'm guessing it looks like he's burnt out. After so many shows, I mean, he competed at the Mr. Olympia, and before that he did the New York and Indy. This year he did the Arnold and Boston and Indy, and now the New York, and that's a lot of shows, man. It takes a toll on, on a body. So, he's probably not there mentally, but, again, based on the way he's looking, I actually think he has a chance. Maybe something clicks in his head, and he starts believing it, and he starts training the way he, he's supposed to, to really maximize his physique, and to really look dry and hard, and the way he, he usually does. Again, Justin Rodriguez, at his absolute best, the way he looked when he was 8th in the world, at the Mr. Olympia, in my opinion, probably beats. Blessing of Adibu, Charles Griffin, Max Charles, all these guys. But that's Justin at his best. Can Justin be at his best next week, actually, on this weekend, New York Pro? What do you guys think? Well, based on this photo, I think he has a chance. But whatever you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. And for the end of this video, we have some pretty bad news. So, Giles Thomas, Muscular Development Magazine uh, uh, podcast host. You probably watched Global Muscle, MD Global Muscle. Apparently, this guy had a heart attack. So, this was posted by Muscular Development Instagram page. They say, hey everyone, Jen here. I wanted to give you some updates about Giles Thomas that broke on Instagram over the weekend. Uh, it is true that he suffered a heart attack in Ireland this past weekend. 
They also say that he is in a hospital and he won't be making any new episodes of of their show until he's uh, fully recovered. So apparently he survived this heart attack. He didn't die. And, you know, it's it's still pretty bad news. I mean, this guy used to compete as a bodybuilder and then I believe as a man's physique competitor. And he ended up being a muscular development uh, YouTube show host. But as you can see on this photo here, I didn't know about this, honestly. I mean, I knew that he was competing in man's physique, but I didn't know that he was doing bodybuilding and that he looked this freaking jacked and shredded. So apparently his body took a toll, a serious toll back in the day and is this the reason for a heart attack not necessarily maybe i mean after everything that happened everybody will assume that and you know it's a safe assumption pretty much but it's only that it's an assumption maybe it's just genetic thing who knows heart attacks happen to office workers or people from any sphere it doesn't have to be bodybuilding related but you know, it happened, he had a heart attack and now he's in the hospital and, um, you know, he will get back at his feet and then he will be back on his YouTube channel. So, wish him well, guys, and this is gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna see more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.